Hi everybody, Rob here from the Oyster House Boys and today I'm just going to do a kind of a meet the module on mutable instruments beads uh, which is, as we all know, uh, kind of Clouds V2 although I think that's maybe slightly unfair calling it that so it, it serves a lot of the same purposes uh, but it's also built from scratch from the ground up so it's a, a different kind of a, a beast entirely in some ways so at the moment you can hear it's doing something um, even though there's no input uh, uh, kind of patched into it at the moment it's it's making a noise so it does this cool thing where if you just kind of leave it alone for a few seconds it will start to make its own noise just kind of keep itself occupied um, and what we can do here is if we take a look at some of the controls we have um, this knob here which is the feedback which actually scrolls through different wavetables So there's quite a number of them in there. Uh, and if I find one like this, and then I move up to the time knob, in this particular mode, it doesn't affect time. It affects filter cutoff. Which effectively means that Beads is a sound source in its own right. You don't have to plug in a VCO or a sample player or anything. Um, and you have control over pitch. Now what's really cool and makes this particularly playable, let's just choose a, it's a bit clearer. We also have an envelope here for these different pulses. Now the pulses are controlled by the density knob here. And we can either have evenly spaced beads, I suppose, or granules, or randomly. I'm gonna stick with evenly for now, with just a few. Um, we have this knob here, which is the, the size of those pulses. So at the moment, they're actually in reverse. So we can make them quite clicky by putting on the shortest time, which is at this kind of like 11 o'clock position. And then we can increase them by turning the knob further around. We can change the envelope of those, the, 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 the different beads or granules with this knob. So that's quite a soft, it's a kind of a softened, inverted V. Um, and we can go around to a, an up ramp, a down ramp, or square. Somewhere between the downward ramp and the, the soft V I think is quite nice. Just decrease that so we get a slight pluck. And what I can do now is, if I want it to actually play the pitch of this, I could plug in to this pitch jack here. And I'm just gonna put this into, what shall I use for this? I'm just gonna plug into the root of Instro's harmony. Um, and I can just put this into kind of live playing mode. So I can play it like that. I could plug the CV in from like a key step, something like that, or I could put it into a sequencer. So I'm just gonna put this into the CV out of channel one of Erica Synth's black sequencer. And tweak this to taste. Now at the moment, I've got a bit of reverb on, the reverb's on about one o'clock. I'll just turn it off. So that's the, the dry sound. I can turn it all the way up. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that out now, like so. And I think that was just a, it's a kind of a fun Easter egg. It's not how most people will probably use the beads, um, but I, quite like it as a way to just kind of learn a little bit of how the different controls work, especially that size and the, and the um, density knob. Okay, so let's put some audio into it. Now you can use a, any audio source, obviously, and you've got a, a left and a right input. I'm just gonna use a left input, and this is gonna be from um, my squid sample. 
um, and this is just an acoustic little sample. Um, I'm just going to turn the feedback down. Now the feedback when you've got something plugged in uh, is a kind of like a, um, a, a limiting, it's not a kind of a feedback of like how many loops like in a delay, it's more about the, the signal. Um, now I'm going to turn this knob all the way to the, to the right, so completely clockwise. Um, and that's the wet dry for the output, not for the reverb, but for the output. The but one below it is for the reverb. Now I'm just going to make sure all these are at 12 o'clock or thereabouts. And I'm going to put the, the granule size all the way to the right. So that's clockwise and the time to the start. So now when you've got audio incoming, there, there's a buffer inside here of different sizes. We have four different sizes um, and quality of bit rate. So the highest quality bit rate gives you a shortest uh, kind of buffer size, and I think it's about four seconds. And this control tells you where on that buffer the, the sample is gonna play back from, or the granule is, or bead is gonna play back from. Now, I'll keep it at the beginning for now, and I'll just load up this sample. So I'm gonna go for this sample bank now. I'm just gonna load that. So I'm just using one channel of squid sample, um, which I've loaded an acoustic guitar into. I'll turn the reverb down, play that again. Uh, if I turn that all the way left, actually, you'll hear it. So if this is all the way left, it's completely dry, so you'll, you'll hear that coming in. I'll just play it again. Okay, now if I want to, I can affect that just as it's incoming audio, or I can put it into the buffer and store it there with the freeze control. So I'll just play it again, and I have four seconds worth, and at the end of what I want to record in, I just hit freeze. Okay, so this is now frozen. That little bit of sample is now captured inside the internal memory of the of beads, um, but you can't hear anything. And the reason for that, and you can see it's it's playing at the moment. The reason for this is because there are no beads. So even if I turn this to fully to the right, now we have the option to increase the amount of beads, which will overlay more and more plays of that sample or I can go less regular so where this starts to become the kind of texture synthesizer is when we use this as the basis for a new sound so I've shortened the length of the, the granule which at the moment doesn't sound all that great it's just a kind of a click I just change the envelope to soften it slightly now what's fun and what can make this quite interesting as like a playable sound source as well is if I change the position in that buffer that's being played. Increase the size a little bit. So you can hear, I've got quite a dense playback and quite large granules with a softish envelope. And I can use this time knob here to scroll through to find the kind of the timbre of incoming sound that I want. Okay, so let's talk about modulation. Um, actually, I'm just going to increase the, the reverb just to bring back a bit of kind of that stereo fun because the reverb if you output to left and right sounds really lovely. Okay, so one of the, the, the party tricks of beads is you don't necessarily have to input you know, envelopes and LFOs or any kind of modulation here, it can do it itself to an extent. So I'm just going to look at the, the timing here. So if I turn clockwise, it's uh, just going to take the 
the modulation that you would plug in as a normal attenuator. If I turn anti-clockwise from 12 o'clock, it will internally modulate. And the same can be said for some of the other elements here as well. I'm going to do pitch, just so we can play with a bit of pitch changing. It's going to get a bit pluckier. Let's shorten the grains. Now what I could do is I could overlay this granular playing over the top of the incoming audio by taking the wet dry signal just changing that back. Now, the thing to remember when you're doing that is that the sample that you have captured in the buffer might, might not be the same as the, the actual buffer size. Um, so I'm just going to unfreeze this and just play. So that way I can manually input some audio, take the granularity from it and output both over the top of each other. And this control is how you would adjust that mix. Now you can modulate this, you can modulate the reverb amount and you can modulate the feedback as well, but you can only do one at a time. And that's what this button here is for. So if I press that, it highlights the control that's being modulated by this jack. So you could put something into there like an LFO um, and it would modulate one of those three those three controls there. So if we wanted to modulate the amount of reverb, let's just do this. Uh, let me grab a cable and I'll just put in a slowish LFO coming in from Oct, like so. And then if I just click that a couple of times, it will come through to the density of, sorry, to the, the amount of reverb. I'll just get that back in the buffer. Let's just listen to the pure output. So I found the key to get some nice stuff out of this is to just play with the, the size and the time to find the balance between the kind of the chunk of audio you want to capture um, and, and the amount of it that you want it to play back. That sounds like a good start place. I'll just increase the size of it. plucky and now you can hear as the LFO comes around you can hear the reverb being added in kind of waves okay so let's look at another example I'm gonna unplug that LFO put the cable to the side and let's look at just how you might take something like let's go for just a standard VCO uh, Let's go for Erica Synth's Black VCO2, and I'm going to take a saw wave. Let's just um, press freeze. So this is going to be a continual signal coming into beads. Like so. Turn down the reverb for a second. Turn my grain size right down to minimum. Time right to the start, and I'll go for a softish. Envelope. Okay, so I'm going to go right from the, the shortest but best quality sample rate to the longest but lowest, and you can immediately hear some of that internal modulation where it's kind of emulating an old tape deck, so there's like wow and flutter. So 
So I've got no pulse width or anything. There's no VCO modulation happening here. This is just a straight uh, saw wave coming out of the VCO. All of that modulation you can hear is happening within leads. Okay, so what can we do with this? Well, I'm gonna not freeze this. I'm just gonna let the, the audio come in internally. And I'm just gonna mix this. I'll turn it completely to the right for now so we can hear what we're getting. So, using this, tenure modulator or whatever it is that mutable instruments call these um, I'm changing the pitch so I'm getting a kind of it's not I suppose it is generative um, sequence coming through from there now if I don't like this regular gate kind of effect that's coming through from here if I turn this knob to the right I'll get kind of a random it's not a gate but it, it feels like it because it's random uh, gaps between the different granules Obviously, I can still input, uh, you know, pitch information using a sequencer or some other source. I can plug marbles into here to have a bit more control over how that modulation worked and how that kind of generated uh, pitch information was happening. But it's quite cool that you can do it from within here itself. So I'm just going to increase the size. Now, one thing you can see, it's sort of kind of like 10 or 11 o'clock on this. On the size control there's a little double marker and that's the kind of shortest uh, size of granule if you turn it anti-clockwise from there you actually get a reverse so if I go to a plucky sound that changes the the kind of feel of that entirely which is quite nice so if I now increase the reverb starts to become something actually that sounds quite musical I think. I'm just going to go to the VCO and increase the octave. And decrease the range of pitch modulation. Now you probably hopefully notice that the pitch change or the, the octave change I made on the VCO took a little while to actually catch up with beads or beads to catch up with the VCO probably more accurate um, and that's because we've got this length of buffer so it takes that amount of time just to clear into the next section of memory in beads and so if I unplug that and put it into a I'll just go straight into the sign which is now in it's plugged in so you can, you can hear it took a few seconds for, for beads to catch up and then put this new data, this new audio into the buffer. Now I'm going to back off the mix control to halfway. So what we're outputting now is half of the, the sine wave from the black VCO and half of the output from beads. That sounds really quite beautiful. And obviously because this is just a, a kind of a fixed pitch and a fixed audio coming in, scrubbing the time does nothing because it's a, a steady audio input. So now I think if I go back and I re-modulate that reverb, I think this could sound quite lovely. Let's have a go. There we've got kind of loads and loads. Now the reverb has died away a little bit and you get a bit more of the plucky nature. I could of course just increase the wet mix to make that more obvious. So I'll let that run through once more.
what I did there is I just changed the second in quality levels, which is uh, a little bit shorter than we had before, not that the length of time matters too much um, for, for just a, a straight sine wave coming in. Um, but it gives a different nature, a different kind of flavour. I'll go to the third one in a second. Okay, I think that sounds really pretty and I love what this can do. Um, I put all sorts of things into this. I played with the kalimba, which sounds quite nice, um, and plug in my acoustic guitar in, uh, give it a, a similar feel to uh, how I played that sample at the beginning of the acoustic guitar sample. Uh, I'll try and find a way of getting my acoustic into here so that I can play it and get to the controls and everything. Uh, just logistically that was difficult so I just went with the sample. Okay so that's been a, an overview of what I'm doing with beads uh, and an introduction to how some of the controls work. I hope it's been of some use. If you want me to go deeper because it does more if you want me to actually plug some modulation in um, and show you how that works and how some of the extra sounds can come around then do let me know do leave me a comment below um, or a question and please do like and subscribe it really does mean a lot um, and it helps me to kind of keep the channel going and uh, justify everything that i'm doing so thanks very much i've been rob and speak to you all soon